Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here, and welcome to part five of our build of the 160 scale no grade strike Gundam. Now, uh, we did all the metallics in the last episodes. Uh, now we're going to start painting the armour. Uh, there is one little bit I have to show you. Uh, this one piece of armour, after I painted everything else, I realised I hadn't painted this. So I thought, right, well, I'll save some time, I'll just brush paint it. Yeah, it didn't come out great. Uh, brush painted, I had a load of brush marks and, and sort of rough bits here. So I sanded it down and thought I'll just go over it again, but I've gone through to the plastic. <sighs> That's why you don't cut corners. Uh, on a plus note, uh, I brush painted a couple of parts, chrome silver, the Mr. Metal chrome silver, and they came out really nicely. After being buffed, they came out rather sweet, so I'm quite chuffed with those. They came out nice and smooth. The chrome silver is quite a smooth colour, so you can brush it on. This was brushed on. Uh, and it's not too bad, actually. So it's not quite as smooth a finish as if I'd airbrushed it, but for two little parts, cleaning out the airbrush, uh, doing all that so I didn't want to waste too much paint so yeah I'm quite pleased with those so anyway what we're doing today well we're going to be painting these parts uh, all these parts I've got to paint here now are white and there's a billion of them so I'm going to show you how I do painting white over these parts or any color uh, to get some kind of pre-shading now I've uh, when I primed them in black so instead of doing panel lining if you remember I painted the whole thing black so we're going to give that a go so let me go and get the airbrush spray boot can't get my words out today it's another one of those days, isn't it, where I'm just going fleh, bleh, 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 bleh. <sighs> Start again. I'll get the spray booth up and running, and we'll go and paint this. So, back in a moment. Okay, right, so we have our piece. I'm going to be using uh, Tamiya, X, oops, Tamiya XF2, which is slightly overblown, which is flat white. Just that. In the airbrush, and I'm back to my Trigger Neo, is a sort of 50-50 mix of flat white and some, uh, in this case, Ultimate Airbrush Thinner, just to thin it down. So let's crack on, shall we? So I'm going to put the extract on. Keep my mask off, because I'm only going to do this one piece, and then I'll stick my mask on when I do the other pieces. So always wear your mask, folks. Here it gets noisy. So make sure we've got some paint. So what we're going to do is do a light coat, misty coat first, just a light coat. Nothing too heavy. Now this bit is inside, and I can't remember if you'll see this or not, so if you do, what I'm going to do is do a light coat here, but leave it as a light coat, so it just looks darker, like it's an interior part of the, of the machine. Now you're not going to see underneath, because that goes flush against the legs, so... Right, so now we're going to go with a heavier coat, and we want to try and keep some shadows around edges and things like that, so what I'm going to do, I'll show you, is give it a little bit of air, a bit more paint on there, I think. A little bit of air just to flash it off. And now what we're going to do is focus on various parts. We're going to go in a bit more, a bit more paint this time, initially to start with. See, there's a bit more paint now, but it's still a, a, a grey colour. Looks white on camera, but it's not actually white. Now what we want, we want to build the highlights. So I'm going to focus on this centre part. So a little bit of air, and then go straight in. But really, almost no paint at all. And you're going to see me swirling the airbrush a bit, because that helps me make a nice smooth... It's hard to explain, but it makes a nice smooth patch of colour. And I'm using almost no paint. Just building it up slowly now. I don't know if this will come out on camera at all. But I'm going so slowly that I can control where the paint is going. So I can see where I'm spraying and move it if I need to. And 
And as more paint goes on, you'll see it becomes less dark grey and more white. So I'm kind of sticking to highlight areas, to top edges, things like that. This is a top edge here, so we'll put more on the top and keep it away from the inner edge. Some on there. Focus in the centre of panels, away from panel lines. And what you should hopefully find. lucky is that you'll end up with a white part. Now it might not come out on camera but there is some really subtle shading around these parts here and around this centre bit and around these panel lines here and if I've been being very careful so you can almost see like a, a panel line there where it's still a bit dark that's fine. I can leave it a bit darker in here And then here I'll just put a little bit more, but not so much. So it's still a dark colour, like it's an interior panel. Access maintenance crews don't get to it as often, so there you go. And that's all I'm doing. Let's try another one. Let's try a piece of the skirt. Ooh, a bit of skirt. So again, go with the light coat first. It's kind of hard to explain. It takes some practice to learn how to do it. But once you've got it, you spot on. Now you can see both sides of the skirt, so we'll have to do inside as well. Now what I'm going to do on the inside here, give it some air first. Because you can see both sides of the inside, so I'll be able to demonstrate better what I mean by leaving this darker. So let's get this another coat. We'll do the top side. See I'm building it up in the middle of the panel. I'm circling it as I say just so I can keep it roughly random so if there are any fades from the white to the grey it's kept kind of random looking and feathered rather than just a straight line. A bit more paint. There we go. Now edges can be tricky, so just go slowly. You probably end up just painting the whole edge, but that's fine. The trick with this is the closer the airbrush gets, the finer the line of paint it puts on the piece. So if you want to get really fine, go really close up. Hope this is all in shot. And I'm almost putting on no paint. I'm building up really slowly. Really, really slowly. Oops, apart from that bit, which is in really fast. All you're looking for is just some natural variation in the tone, really. Just some little subtle shadowy areas. You may not necessarily see them straight away, but your eye will pick them out. So I'm going to leave that bit a bit darker there and focus on this edge. to do that but it's all part of the randomness okay now for the inside we'll just give it some light mists because this is I want this to look like it's like I said before engineers can't go out to it to maintain it clean it so it's going to look grubbier and dirtier so what we'll do is we'll have a little bit of highlighting but not much try and catch the edges. If you angle it like this, remember that the, the line of paint comes out from the airbrush like this. 
so you can kind of paint on edges like this by angling it like that so the cone comes out and just catches the edge and this way I can get a brighter edge without painting the whole inside so now you see you've got the white armour outside here in the middle and it's grey on the inside and I'll do weathering anyway but this just makes it a bit greyer now again I don't know if this will come out on camera at all so I'll, I'll show you afterwards but I'll now go and crack on and get the rest of this done uh, and when we come back we'll have a look at how that's come out so back in a moment okay and we're back right that's all been done to me about an hour and a half an hour and a half something like that two hours maybe uh, as you can see I've done the other colours as well uh, I've done the greys for uh, some of the armour parts, so the the bits that stick out around the front and back, at uh, the bottom of the feet. Uh, done the blues and the reds and the yellows, only one yellow piece and I think a couple of blue pieces, these two and, well, one other. Uh, and done all the whites. Um, let's show you how that came out. So using that method that I was using, using, let's focus on that for you, you can see how that's come out. Uh, it's It looks a bit more extreme on camera. So I can see these are quite dark on the screen here, but in reality it's quite subtle. Um, I focused around these centre parts, not centre parks, centre parts. Stayed away a bit from these vents, and that just left them looking naturally darker. These are like, I assume, some kind of exhaust vent or jet vent, so just left them a little bit darker and just gives that natural variation and saves me a bit of weathering. Uh, underside, I left it darker again, uh, just because, like I was trying to say in the video, but not doing very well. Um, I like to think of these as bits that are harder to get to and clean out. And like I've always said in other videos before, go and look at a train and look at underneath the train where all the undercarriage and the, all the greebles and doodads and tubes and devices are. The top of the train can be nice and shiny, but underneath it's got that kind of dusty, dirty look. And that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Just, you know, it's just dust and dirt and residue from whatever mechanical things are going underneath. Uh, now we could go in and add some details here and I'm not decided if I will do but we'll see. There will be further weathering again to enhance all these lines, but this is just the base colour, so this is just getting it nice and coloured. Um, so I'm quite pleased with that. That's how the leg came out. Uh, pretty cool. It was a bit uh, overexposed on camera, so that's why I wanted to... Oh, I forgot to do that bit. I don't think you can see that bit anyway. Um, yeah, it came out a bit overexposed on in the spray booth, so I wanted to show you these properly. Uh, there is some pre-shading on the foot. Let me just change the lighting of camera and focus and everything. Uh, you might be able to see it, it's just, it, obviously it was primed black and then it's just bog standard German grey with a little bit of white in it. I did do the centre of the panel shading but it doesn't really come out with German grey, I know it's there. Uh, I think the plan is we'll paint these thrusters uh, later on. Uh, and again, same on the blue. Uh, again, it probably doesn't come out very much. Uh, it's intended to be a subtle effect. It looks quite drastic when you do it, and then when it's dried, it kind of fades away. But there is some shading around these edges, uh, inside these vents. Uh, it's just hard to see, but I say there will be further weathering that will enhance that even more. Now, one thing I did do, these are the two parts of the head, and look at this. I've not painted them. <clears throat> What's that all about? Well, um, there's a very good reason for that. I wanted to paint in inside. Uh, but not out. So I painted inside the back of the skirt on the head there and I painted inside the cheeks because when you put this together I don't think it actually goes together with the bits in but when you put it together it's got this big honking seam line right there <coughs> now it has a seam line here on the crest which I'm happy to leave because that just looks like maybe it's the front part and the back part of the crest I can deal with that uh, and that seam line there looks like it's maybe this is part of a separate cowling but I'm going to need to do something about this seam line which is and painting the arse so Obviously, what I could do um, is just glue that together and file it, but then I have to figure out how to get the face in there. Because the face is one of those ones... You, there are people that will hack around inside and make it so that you can take the face in and out and then just glue it in at the end. I don't do that, because I just screw it up. So what I'm going to do is get the face built, um, pre um, get all the base colours on the face, get the eyes and stuff done, put the face in, and then when I put the head together, I'll just mask off the face, which is why I've painted this bit so it's ready. So I need to assemble the face, which is these parts here. 
you see there one two three uh, and also the stickers now I don't mind using foil stickers for cameras and eyes and I'll tell you for why uh, because a lot of people will paint these they'll either do reverse washes on the eyes and they'll paint the cameras clear green and I've done that before using to me a clear green however I often find that they never come out quite as reflective as the ones that come with the kit so although I'll throw most kit stickers away these I will cope with take yourself a nice pair of sharp tweezers get yourself in shot always a winner peel back the edge a little bit uh, just grab a corner gently as possible because you don't want to scratch it you don't want to scratch the coating and as best you can line this shit up I need like three hands Tony come around I need your help just get it on there initially I only stuck it on very loosely it's not stuck on very much at all because I need to be able to maneuver it now if you watch my Giara Zulu build it's basically the same technique as using their little piping stickers you're just getting it on and lining up very gently it's by no means stuck down hard and fast at the moment push it down gently make sure everything is lined up are we lined up there? I don't know there. Try wiggling it, see if it moves. I could just drop it. Okay, so now I can take my cotton bud. Da da da. And what I'll do is just start to, because I don't want to scratch this sticker and, or get it in the wrong place. Duh. I don't want to scratch the sticker, so just rubbing it with something that's not soft and squishy is just going to really knacker the, uh, the finish. So I'm just going to rub this on. Right, so that's down. It's pretty good. Quite pleased with that. Yeah, I've just found these stickers to be more often than not, they're more reflective than any other option you can do, like painting them. So I often figured to myself, well, why should I go to all the hassle of painting them and doing a reverse wash, apart from the fact I could show you guys how to do a reverse wash, uh, when they're just going to disappear and not be visible. I may as well just use the stickers and keep them visible so there we are there's a little bit of a tiny wrinkle there but i'll just have to live with that maybe a little crinkle in the plastic perhaps that's showing through oh there's one on the other side so it could just be the shape of the plastic yeah there we go right now i need to add the camera so let's get this on let's get it on no i'm doing it again god youtube channel there boy i can't afford to have it, things pulled down for copyright this just quite simply goes on the top now there are some details on this camera there's two little lenses so that one was quite straightforward and simple so I can push that down it's not the usual shiny reflective but it's close enough and again it's better than anything I could paint it looks much neater and nicer so we'll get this squished down hmm not going on well at all this one don't like it Oh, and there's some construction work outside. Fantastic. Give me a minute and I will close the window. Right, that's better. Close the window now. The cotton bud. Ah, this blue one. Yeah, not feeling the love for this blue one. So there we have the head. Kind of looks a little bit googly-eyed. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, and obviously we need to fix this in place so what I will do now is what I will do for the rest of the kit later which is just to quickly gloss varnish it now I'm just using my usual pledge multi-surface wax now I have ordered some new stuff which is the new version of pledge multi-surface wax but for the moment I'm using my old pledge multi-surface wax so what we need to do is dead simple get some on a brush I use a an old brush but it's soft and slightly floppy which is what you want and because you can brush this stuff it's brilliant what I'm going to do is cover over those I'm going to make sure to get it round the edges of the stickers and I've found it may not be perfect solution but I've found it just helps seal the sticker in don't get me wrong Bandai stickers are excellent and are very hard wearing and you have to work quite hard to take them off but it doesn't do any harm just to lock them in place so we'll get that around the edge 
I've got to do the whole thing anyway, so let me get a crocodile clip. May as well do this now before I start masking it off. That way the paint job is protected. Now you'll know from well every other video I've done where I've done gloss varnishing, pledge is beautiful stuff because it self levels. So you can be quite careless with it. You don't, don't want to be too careless, but you can be a little bit careless and just brush it on carefree style. And it will level out quite nicely. It might take a couple of coats if you're looking for a proper gloss finish. There's a bit too much there. But uh, at this point, I'm looking for protection because when I mask this off, I don't want to be pulling the paint off. So that's gloss varnished. Lovely. Yeah, it looks a bit googly-eyed. I'm not, I'm not the keenest of de on the design of these eyes, to be honest, I have to say. His eyes are a bit too high up from the from the red bit. Somebody got paid to design it. I'm not going to knock him, it's an awesome mobile suit. So I need to leave this to dry for, I'll leave it for about an hour. Uh, so let me go and let that dry, I'll go and have a cup of coffee. Nice cup of coffee. In my litre Batman mug, which is literally holds a litre. Uh, and then when we come back we'll get the head together and we'll start the process of sealing that join. So. Hopefully this episode isn't too long and I have to stop here. So it's either back in a moment or adios amoebas, one of the two. Okay, right, as you can see, gloss varnish is now dried. I've put the mask in place, the face, look at that shine. It's nice. Now when we do, a, if we do do any kind of final matte varnish coat on this, it's obviously going to go over the eyes and make them matte again, but that's when I can go back and put gloss varnish back on. And when I do, I'll just do it on the actual gold parts so they're shiny and the black part would stay matte if we use a matte varnish. Uh, you'll also notice I abandoned the blue sticker because basically it looked like ass uh, and all that little detail there was lost so what I did instead was take the sticker off, paint over it silver, paint over it to me a clear green which is X25, you can just brush that on. When that had dried I went over with a little bit of gloss varnish again then a little bit of Ultimate Weathering Wash Earth, which is just clay and water. Gave that 10 minutes to dry. Got rid of the excess with the cotton bud, so all the raised areas were exposed. And then gave it another gloss varnish. So there's not much of the wash left, but there's a little tiny bit, and it just gives it some depth. So I'm quite pleased with that. So, let's get this on. I also started experimenting with the back camera, because I realise it's a tiny little bit down there, but I've not figured that out yet. We'll just paint over that. So, yes, need to stick this together. Uh, now, what I've not done here, uh, instead of sanding these surfaces, I need to expose the plastic so the glue can work on the plastic. So instead of doing that, because that would affect the shape and you might end up with a panel line with gaps and, and not be a nice, neat panel line, what I did instead was basically just very gently scrape it with a the, the combat knife. Then. <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? Yeah, I scraped it with a combat knife and then I shot it with a shotgun. And then I ate it alive. And then... And then it got really weird. I don't know where I'm going with that. So yes, I scraped it with the combat knife, obviously, to get the uh, the primer off. So it just exposes some plastic. So when I put the glue in there, it's got some glue to liquidize and melt. So that should hopefully go together. Like I say, if I'd sanded it, it may have ended up making this not a uniform panel line, but rather a bit wavy. And I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. Do I want to go around this bit? I don't know, I'm not sure, because if I don't do it, then I'll probably get some glue up there and it'll just look pants. If I do do it, I'll probably end up knackering this crisp line, but let's just do it and find out. So we're going to be using our old standby friends again, you saw this last time. Thick cement, and eventually extra thin cement, both from Tamiya. So let's get the glue. So as before, we start with the Tamiya Extra Thin, and just apply it liberally to this surface. Surface... Again, not too worried if I get it on the outside because we're going to be sanding that down. And also on the front of the face, yeah, that's it, so stick on the front. There we go. Got to tell you, it's a bad thing, but I love the smell of Tamir extra thin cement in the morning. Right, careful not to get fingers anyway because they've got glue all over them because I'm an idiot. Get these in. So I'm going to push it together, and just before it goes together fully, give it one last dibbly dob, just to make sure. Give it a second for the glue to start doing its magic. You can see there I've got some glue on there already, and it's taken the primer right off. Give it a second. 
than the moment of disastrous truth. Let's do it. Squish. Wonder how it's squish. Squish. Try not to do anything on the mask, not to touch the mask at all, because last thing I want to do is get glue on my finger, then primer on my finger on the glue, and then get that on the mask, and then it'd be like, oh my god, the whole thing's ruined. Okay, so we get a nice little bead, bead, there. So continue with the squishing. <sighs> Got to tell you, I bought a, it's, it's not a very exciting story at all, but I bought a deodorant the other day, you know, like, like you do. It's not an exciting story. Uh, I use Lynx deodorant, and I got one, I can't remember which one it is now, but it's just a really nice smell. I just took my hoodie off then, because I'm a bit warm, and it's like, damn, I smell fine. It's not often you can say that about me. <laughs> mm. Must be all that combat knife action. Right, so that is now glued. I am now shitting kittens, because this can go one of two ways. It can go terribly, or it can go absolutely terribly. Or there's a very slim chance it may actually work incredulously. So I'm going to give that a minute. Gev? I'm going to give that a da Blah, blah. This episode is going to have like so many little weird noises at the end after the titles. Because I'm just talking bollocks in this entire episode. Oh, there's a lot on my plate at the moment. I'm a bit distracted. Uh, right, so I'm going to give that a few minutes just to dry. Then I will come over and do a bead of glue like last time with the fat to me a glue. I'll let this dry because it's I need it to be super flat so I'm gonna give it a minute to dry and let the beads go hard. You were. So I won't go through a whole sanding process again because you saw that last time when we did the seam line. Same principle. I'll put this thick glue over the top, let that dry for a few hours, maybe overnight, come back and sand it. Hopefully this will all disappear. I'll use like a light coloured paint as a guide coat and hopefully I won't screw up this nice crisp edges up here. <laughs> I hate doing this bit. I hate doing the head. Why can't they just... Why can't they just make it a better seam line? Like, I don't know, give you a top bit and a bottom bit where this natural... There's a lot of ways you could have done that without having 30 extra pieces and not had just a big-ass seam line down the middle. Come on, Bandai, step it up. Right. <sighs> stress now, stress, stress, stress. Back in a moment. Okay, as you can see now, we've uh, part way through the process. The head has been filled with the glue, uh, sanded, and now reprimed. And as you can see, no seam line. Yeah, that came out pretty well. I've got the face and the camera mask off uh, so they don't get any paint on them. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that works. So, looking pretty spanky. Time to go give it some white paint, and then uh, we'll get it all together and see what it looks like. So, let me go and get this sprayed up, and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. Back in a moment.
Okay, so that's all done. So it's all nicely painted now. Seam line completely disappeared. I'm really pleased with that. I didn't screw up these little tiny details here. Come out really nicely. Uh, you may have seen me angling the brush like that at this kind of angle. And there's a good reason for that. I wanted to keep these vents dark. I was trying to figure out how the heck to paint these vents, but I realized I'm painting them black. So when I'm spraying the white on, if I can do it in such a way the most they get is a little tiny bit of white, then they'll keep their kind of gray color, or at least a, a dark gray color. And you remember I was saying about how you have the airbrush here and then the paint comes out like a cone, like a, a fan of paint. If you take the bottom edge of the paint, so they imagine the cones here and there's the bottom edge, and you just, tell you what, let's imagine that is the cone of paint coming out, top edge, bottom edge, so there's the airbrush. All you're doing is you say, right, I'm gonna spray this paint and I'm gonna spray it here like that, so it doesn't go into this recess part. And if you're careful and angle it, you can get the paint to kind of go around and close to the edge, but not too much go on the bit inside. And what I was able to do was feather it, so it does get to about the edge here, you can see, but it's faded a little bit, it's a little bit darker. And I'm able to get it on the edges here and on this strip, but not get it on too much on the vent, which means I've saved myself a whole load of fiddly brush painting because now all I need to do is put a little wash in there and we're done. That's it, the vents are done. I need to paint the little Gatlings, the uh, the Vulcans from Metallic, obviously. Uh, and similar on the back, but I didn't actually knowingly do this, but uh, I managed to keep paint out from inside these so they stay dark. So sometimes you get little recessed details. It's not about actually painting the little recessed details. It's about cleverly using your airbrush. If you remember, you've got the fan and you've got a crisp edge here. You'll see me at one point, I was trying to, I was trying to get these edges here painted and what I was doing was getting the airbrush here spraying that way pss, 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 and spraying it and bringing it closer and as soon as I saw paint it in that I was like and just enough to get the edge of the fan of paint so it caught the edge here but didn't go on the grill takes a little practice but once you get the hang of it it's a really really versatile technique and it just means you can get little recessed bits unpainted especially if you're using a dark primer. So behind these Vulcans now, when I paint these Vulcans metallic, it's kind of dark behind there. So with a bit of a pin wash of a dark color and on these vents as well, they'll just look brilliant. They'll look like they're really painted and weathered without me doing much effort. So I'm really pleased with the scene line, came out really well. <sighs> now the moment of truth, let's get the masking tapings off. This is where it all goes horribly wrong. Let's see if I can do this. Let me just change the focus so I can have this on the desk. Right, so let's see if we can get this off carefully without pulling all the paint off from underneath with the tweezers. Yes, perfect. No paint on the on the uh, on the cameras at all. Need some more gloss varnish on it just to make it even more shiny, but I can build it up slowly. Now the real moment of truth is the face and gefarten mid the eyes, on the face, on the mouth, and all the things that go on the face that we do not want to be painted mid the paint so I could do this with my hands but I think it's more more dramatic for you to watch me do it tweezers because I'm like I can't grab it I can't grab it all right so this is the moment of all the truths I also have to hope I don't pull the sticker off yeah, wish me luck you'll notice I used uh, some little bits of masking fluid as well as masking tape that was purely where I had bits of masking tape that had little gaps and holes, didn't want paint to squeeze its way in. And we have, hallelujah, look at that, no overspray, no muss, no fuss. I am so pleased with this head that's come out. I wouldn't say, I'd never say perfect, I'm not that egotistical but it's come out really well I've put a few chips in the paint already by handling it but that's fine because I'm going to weather it anyway so really pleased with that when I first did the seams I uh, put the thin glue on I know I, I didn't show it because you'd seen it already but I put the, put it together put the thin glue on then put some thick glue over the top let that dry for a while sanded it back there was still a little few little pits and dings in the in the surface uh, probably where glue hadn't fully dried and I tried to sand over it so I just went over it again with the thick glue just a little bit and let, let that dry overnight and sanded it again and it just came out all right 
So I'm really, really pleased with that. Let's put the uh, let's put all this nonsense on, on on the head and see how it goes together. We have the yellow part first, which goes in here like that. Do you see? So I get really nervous because this can go horribly wrong. Scratch the paint. That goes in there like that. You see? And then also we have the white part on the red part. Here is the white part. The red part goes on here. Like, how's that gone? Very well, thank you. <laughs> mm, old joke, old Star Trek joke. That goes on there. Da -da. And then we simply attach this to here, like this, you see. And this makes the final construction of the totem. The head. Look at that. That's epic. A little bit. Could do with a little bit more white paint here on this far, part of the face. On this part of the face. But I don't know. I might leave that. It's a nice little bit of fading. A little shading. It goes to white towards the end. So I might pop it off and add a bit more white paint. If I can't be bothered, I'll just leave it because it just makes a nice little bit of colour separation that wasn't there before. So that is the head, pretty much, apart from weathering. Head complete. And a bit of gloss varnish on there. Head complete. And that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, thank you so much for watching as always. Tune in for the next one where we'll do some more stuff that I haven't realised what I'm going to do yet. Um, but yeah, go off and have fun with your Gumpler. And try out that seam filling technique. It's a bit hit and miss. takes a little bit of practice to get used to it. But you'll get there in the end. So as always, thank you again so much for watching. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Don't forget, the competition is still running to win your Bear Guy family painted in your chosen colour scheme. So go to facebook.com forward slash model making guru and post up your design as a comment on that sticky thread on the top of the page. So take care of yourselves and until next time, adios amigos. Blah, 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 blah. <sighs> um, blah, blah, blah. Oh my god. Damn, I smell fine. I'm gonna give that and dab that. Granger went to combat knife and then I shot it with a shotgun. And then I ate it alive. And then, and then it got really weak.